So I am a start with I am a big user of LastPass. I still trust the product, even though it's hacked. Yes, it's hacked. But here's how the hack works. Let's break it down a little bit because I don't like clickbaity headlines that just say, you know, uh, the sky is falling, everything's gone to hell in a handbasket. Uh, don't use this. Don't use anything. The reality is. Yes, this is a vulnerability. Yes, they're fixing it. Yes, they actually fixed it already. Also, it's non-trivial. And what I mean by non-trivial is it's not like a hack where you just go to a website and you're done. You're exploited. It's over. That's That would be very, very terrible and bad. Those are the worst hacks. Doesn't mean this doesn't need to be fixed. Doesn't mean it's not a concern. It's just not that concern. It's not like one clicking, you're done. Now, in order to make this hack work, and we'll look through the code real quick here, and there's a great explanation I found on Reddit for how this works, but it stacks vulnerabilities. Now, they discovered that LastPass from this URL, which by the way, right now is down. Uh, I can bring it over here, and we can do a dig real quick. It's gone, they removed the domain. Uh, I imagine, and kind of, they probably changed it because they also released an update of uh, LastPass. But what he had discovered was there's a manifest file in the scripting. And what a manifest file is gonna say, you are allowed to do these things. Well, it turns out that this can send manifests from LastPass to do code executions. So what he did was here, shown that calculator will work by modifying the code in a page to do it. But there's another step to this. You have to spoof this address and that's key. In order to spoof this, you have to have your DNS on your computer hijacked or have someone add a uh, DNS entry for LastPass faking it. And this is a really, really hard thing to do because it's also a very hard thing to secure. They have to hijack what this domain means. So this domain always takes you to LastPass. LastPass calls out, asks for files from this domain. It says, yes, you're LastPass, I'm gonna trust it. They then have to spoof this domain spoof the security certificate for the domain to get your computer to trust it. But if they have access to your computer, they have access to both of those things. So if you're on a network that's compromised, you can get these two things spoofed and then only then can this function to send arbitrary code because it's actually not coming from their servers. The flaw in LastPass, and I'll, uh, one of the Reddit users broke it down really well right here. We'll give a shout out to uh, Fish Supreme over here in NetSec. I can leave the link to the article here. Uh, LastPass extension says manifest accept coming from the script from one min dash UI dot PRID. Not a problem. The script one min dash UI PRID passes incoming messages it gets straight from the extension without checking where they came from. This is a bad idea and is what is quoted in the script. So it's basically not validating what comes from there, which even if you spoofed it, you still should validate it because that would stop the problem. So any website that can open a page and send messages to it, were it not for the two above issues would be a problem, but here it is. One of the messages that LastPass extension takes called open attach will execute a file it receives encoded as an attachment. Those encoded parameters contain a batch file that runs calc.exe, which then runs. And that was the example used here where they were able to get calculator to run. I did really like this, apparently LastPass, who has done a great job. They don't mind disclosure, they update quick, they they uh, get these submitted. Uh, if, if you're not familiar with uh, Tavis Ormandy, he's a amazing vulnerability researcher at Google. Some people think he's a little harsh, but he seems to care more about the users than the companies. So he does follow proper disclosure rules and then he gets to rant about them. So this is a, he's a great security researcher. I'm glad he's on the good guys team uh, as he's really, really smart. So with this being said, that when he first submitted to him, apparently they said they couldn't get the exploit to work. And he looked at the logs and they said, <laughs> I like this. They also said it couldn't get my exploit to work, but I checked my Apache access logs and they were using a Mac. Naturally, calculates he went up here in a Mac. Nevertheless, disabling uh, one min seems good enough mitigation for now because that's what they did immediately. And like I said, I showed you there, it's, it's currently disabled. Uh, but nonetheless, it's pretty clear that this is a major problem. And then down here, he says, hopefully taking on the service, not just remove the DNS entry or a man of milk check still insert correct DNS responses. And that's kind of what I'd said. Someone has to spoof your DNS in order to do that. Or in, like he said here, if you're in a corporate, people are intercepting SSL proxies by installing certificates on your computer to create trust. 
that means it could hack, happen if they hacked at the corporate level and your internal corporate team's using it, they could build that trust in there. But if they're inside and have that level of control, they can do a lot of other things. Now, this happened to last pass before. Someone had a uh, spoof, and Travis had found this as well, which was you could spoof the domain again, and you think you're going to, let's just say, twitter.com, but you're actually not. You're going to a fake version of twitter.com, and LastPass will fill in the password for fake version of twitter.com. It's Once again, they have to be able to spoof twitter.com instead of it actually going to the real Twitter. They have to set up a fake Twitter and have control of your DNS. These are still bad scripts, but I just like to get to the details of how they actually work because the headlines, you read through some of these articles, they just don't give you some of that. Uh, they just want headlines. They want clicks. And two critical bugs found in Chrome and Firefox. What password managers should not do? Leak your passwords. That's a great headline because you're correct. It shouldn't leak your passwords. What a great idea, LastPass. But they're not really It's having that little bit of detail of what is going on here that matters because it's not like you can click on it and it's just the end of the world. It's all going to die. You're gonna, someone's going to make a website and they're just going to steal everything and it's going to fall apart. It's it's a bad hack. It is a... Uh, major security concern needs to be fixed but it still requires what we refer to as stacking attacks so there has to be a couple different factors in place to make this work and that's always what i like to say with some of these is making sure that we understand all the pieces needed it doesn't mean it's not being used matter of fact we know vulnerability stacking is how most of these exploits occur one thing leverage the next thing leverage the next and that's how this happens so but i want to clarify how the last pass uh, hack happened are you fixed yeah last pass auto updates we already have the new version it just it's a browser extension so it updates really fast. Also, by the way, as the fact that it wouldn't work in a Mac, the payload has to be designed for the OS and targeted at the OS. And I run Linux all the time, so less statistically likely, but security by security is not security at all, by the way. But I just wanted to, you know, cover the LastPass hack and at least show you uh, what was there. I'll, do, I'll throw a link to the Reddit article where it's got some explanation, some more discussion on it that's really enlightening. Uh, it's still, like I said, a major concern, uh, but once again, Tavis being uh, very upstanding when it turns this, he did the full discount. He create, he found the bug, disclosed it last pass, they patched it, and then he posts about it on Twitter, and uh, the public uh, bug reports become uh, viable. So they they still go through proper security disclosure, which is wonderful. That's what we want is all these things to go on there. So if I'm wrong about something, uh, you're never as wrong as when you're wrong on the internet. So let me know. <laughs> but I think I covered it. I just wanted to let you know, I still would recommend the product. It's still a uh, it's still a concern. I'm glad they fixed it. GlassPass has been very active. Now, do does this mean we should use a different password manager? Well, here's the thing. I'm willing to bet LastPass being the largest password manager gets picked on the most. We have found smaller uh, password managers, but they don't even make the list because if you don't have any user base, who cares if it's attacked? I hate to say it that way, but there's no bug bounty for it. And there's a bug bounty for finding bugs and products. So back to that, the LastPass, I still use it. Um, I don't have a problem with the company. They're going to find bugs. The internet is the most complicated machine ever built by humans. It's securing it is also one of the most complicated things we've done, whether it's the internet as a whole or specifically like LastPass. Security is hard. Uh, I like LastPass because they're on top of it and working on it. So I still trust the product, but this was a concern. I'm glad it's fixed and um, hopefully they learn the lesson and these companies are learning, you know, being out there. And we have found bugs in every product of every manufacturer. I, at least LastPass has a response and is, uh, you know, on top of getting these things patched. So thank you for listening. If you like the content here, like and subscribe. Thanks.